Sustainability matters because if you look at the true definition of the word, you're building an economy that really can run in the long term, a circular economy. Ellen, thank you so much for being here with us today. Just tell us what is the circular economy and how is it that you as a solo long distance yachtswoman came to start a foundation 10 years, more than 10 years ago to, uh, to focus on it? My previous life was solo nonstop racing around the world, which was quite extreme. And to do that, you prepare for a journey. You put everything on the boat that you'll need for three months and you set off. And the moment that crystallized the transition from sailing to the circular economy was understanding that resources were finite. Now, on that boat, what you have is all you have. There's nowhere to buy food or fuel. You really do understand what finite means. And when you realize our world is the same, you wonder why we're using these resources up. So what fascinated me was how can we use resources in a way that really can run forever? And it was that that led to the straight line turning into the circle, which is the circular economy, which is basically designing the economy from the outset by design so that you keep products and materials in use as long as possible. You design out waste and pollution entirely and you regenerate natural systems. And through that, the entire economic model changes, the design, the materials, the business models, everything shifts to an economy that is distributed, diverse and regenerative. And that really excited me because suddenly here's a goal. You know, here's a place to go to. This is where we're aiming for. It's not just let's use less until we run out. It's but then there's a different way we can use resources. And that was the circular economy. As you've done this work at the foundation, you've really um, prioritized cross-sector collaboration. You're bringing together an incredible coalition of companies and governments and organizations to grow support. Why is it this cross-sector collaboration so crucial to your efforts? At its heart, it's the fact that you know, circular economy is not just about changing one material flow or um, one product. You have to change the whole system. A great example of that would be plastic packaging. 32% of plastic packaging leaks out into the environment, which is horrendous. And we know now only 2% of plastic packaging globally is actually recycled into a plastic of the same quality. It has to be true systemic change to design plastic in a different way, to have a common goal. And that involves companies, it involves the consumer, it involves the policymakers, it involves the financing of the plastic packaging industry to work towards a common goal that shifts the system. But you've talked a lot about how circular economy can actually be a source of growth and provide different kinds of opportunities. So, you know, how is it that the circular economy is really a growth story? It is good for business. It is good for the economy. And it does decouple economic resource constraints because unless there's an economic driver, it isn't going to happen. Some things will, but not that whole system change that has to be unlocked. Who would you say has been the most important in, in some of that change? Policy leaders or you know, individual consumers or companies? You know, the circular economy is very much industry-led. And so when you look at circularity and you look at the resilience that that can bring, actually there, there is a win there for business. If they become more circular, they're more resilient. They can cycle those materials. They can provide better products. They can provide better service because it becomes a service. Give us a couple examples of the innovations that you've, you're most excited about because you're seeing so many of these new companies and new innovations. Innovation sits in so many different spaces with the circular economy. So it could be an innovative business model that enables you know, customers to have clothes on a model whereby you get new clothes every month and the old ones go back and they fit within a system. There are others that have designed uh, new materials that water can be distributed in, innovating for different packaging, making it 100% recyclable or making it something that's 100% compostable and can fit within that system. So effectively, it's a biological nutrient. What are the main obstacles to getting those incredible ideas actually into, into production, into the mainstream? I think one of the main obstacles is, is people's mindset. Because people, many people are still in that linear mindset and not in that circular one. The moment your brain thinks in a circular way, all those business models open up. If you had sort of one thing that you want to make sure investors and corporate leaders understand if they watch this video, what would the one thing be that you want investors and corporate leaders to take away? This is about systemic change and restructuring the global economy. And it has the ability to decouple economic growth and resource constraints. It has the ability to regenerate ecosystems. It's a really, really big picture. So it's happening already and it's a bigger picture and it's scalable fast. Well, again, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's always an incredible privilege and pleasure to be with you. Well, likewise, and thank you, Audrey, for the work you do in the space because you know it takes all of us, makes a big difference.